Sports Snippets, Dennis Sullivan on a late night Tuesday heading into Wednesday. How are you? How about that championship game, NCAA March Madness, final game, Gonzaga goes down for the first time this year. Can you believe it? And the matter in which they lost, Baylor was the big story, guys. They played phenomenal. Going to get into that stuff, all that stuff in this video. Uh, my comments on, on how I think the game went, some of the keys on what I picked up on in watching the game, and throw a few numbers at you as well. So if you do like the content of this particular video, please go ahead. There's this button there. It's called the thumbs up button. There you go. So go ahead and you can just tap it if you want, uh, or go ahead and hit that thumbs up button with some authority. Also, you feel free to subscribe to my channel, Sports Snippets with Dennis Sullivan as well. Hit the notification bell also for future videos. I will be, I know the college, obviously college basketball season now has come to a close. So I plan on doing a fair amount of videos on the NBA playoffs. So if that's something you're interested in, you'll want to make sure that you hit that notification bell also. So let's get right into it, guys. I got to tell you, go, my thoughts on this, I, I have a handful, and I'm going to share these thoughts with you. Final score of 86-70 to 70 almost doesn't even really explain the dominance of Baylor. I mean, they just dominated this game from beginning to end from the opening tip they were up even more I mean they wound up winning by 16 right they were up 10 at the half and then Gonzaga cuts it to about nine they you think Gonzaga is ready to make a run they're about to start getting some momentum and there's still tons of time 16 or so minutes left in the game and no Baylor comes right back Guys, this was something else. And if I were to tell you, let, 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 me, let me share something with you here. That threw me off at first, but now I understand it a little bit better. Gonzaga actually had a better shooting percentage than Baylor in this game by a little more than 6%, if you can believe that. Gonzaga shot 51% from the field. Baylor's at 44.8. But that doesn't even begin to tell the story. The rest of it is all Baylor. Baylor would dominate while we're on numbers, guys. And then I just want to get into what I think really what had to be the mindset of Baylor coming into this game. When it comes to three-point shooting, Baylor with a clear advantage, 10 out of 23, that's, gonna, that's good. That's going to get you about 43.5% where Gonzaga... It just wasn't happening, guys. 5 out of 17, that's just under 30%. So Baylor hits five more threes. Rebounding, not even close. Baylor all over them on the boards, 38 to 22. Also in turnovers, Baylor holds a, not a landslide advantage, but a 14. To, they turned over Gonzaga 14 times, and they would only turn the ball over themselves nine times. So you couple, you couple all those remaining statistics after the 51% for Gonzaga from the field. I mean, here's something else for you. Check this out. Uh, Baylor would take 18 more shots from the field. Because you've got to figure all the, the different shots they created for themselves, offensive rebounding, they got some off turnovers, all this stuff adds up. And I got to tell you guys I've been watching college basketball for about 40 years since I was in high school prior yeah, I even started watching it before high school I remember that Patrick Ewing uh, Ralph Sampson uh, Sports Illustrated and you know they were on the cover of Sports Illustrated all that stuff and that battle Sampson versus Ewing and all that in the early 1980s so I've been watching college basketball for quite some time uh, it's, it's I would say technically 1980, really. I mean, I was young, a young kid. And I don't recall a team that played a 
such an aggressively effective game from bell to bell than Baylor played on Monday night. That had to be one of the best performances by a college basketball team I have ever seen. UNLV had a couple in there, one in particular, I'm going to say around 92-ish. Of course, Dukes had a few, and there, there's been others by other teams. But that performance, Baylor just went out there and they basically said, you know what, Gonzaga? If we play our, you're not going to beat us. We're coming out here. We're going to move that ball. How about that passing? Some of the ball movement they had. They just came out and said, and right out of the gate, it was like 11 1 to start. Baylor is arguably the fastest starting team ever in college basketball. All their games, they come out of the, it's like they come out of the gate. They're up by 10 before you know it. They're up 10 quick. There were times in that second half, let me tell you guys, there were times in that second half where Baylor was basically, they were, go, they were setting up these one-on-one. -on -one. They were doing what they could to get some sort of one-on-one -on -one isolation play. And there was a couple of times where they just took the Gonzaga defender to score. Cool. With the, I mean, they just blew right by them, guys. And Gonzaga, let me, before, I don't want to leave this out. Gonzaga has had such a tremendous season. Could have become the first team to go undefeated, win the tournament in 45 years. That now, that streak continues with the Gonzaga loss. Gonzaga has had a tremendous season. They deserve all the accolades, all the credit. Uh, that they get, they deserve it. They've had a great season, but I got to tell you guys, and I'm going to tell you right right now, that Baylor was prepared to play not just from a strategic standpoint, but from a mental aggressive standpoint, a mental standpoint. They were ready to play. They were not going. You talk about not going to be denied. Uh, that was Baylor. I mean. That was something else. And then the, the kickouts for three, the passing, the, you know, the guys open from three, the kickouts, unbelievable, guys. The guard play was phenomenal. They were led by uh, Jared Butler, who scored 22 points, have seven assists. Teague had another good game. He had 19. 15 points for Davian Mitchell. Those, that's like their big three in scoring. Mitchell had six rebounds, five assists, had a nice complete game. How about uh, there's the, how about this guy who really helped out on the boards? Mark Vital had 11 rebounds, six points, 11 rebounds, two steals, a block. He was all over the place. Uh, Adam Flagler had 13 points as well, two rebounds, two assists. Gonzaga was led by Jalen Suggs, who had a really nice tournament at 22 points. Drew Timmy and Corey Kispert would add 12 apiece. This game was something else, guys. Baylor gets all the credit. Coach Drew, is he deserves it, man. I, you know, he's paid his dues. He's been at Baylor for a while. This guy did a phenomenal job. Phenomenal job with his team. Gonzaga was a Four and a half point favorite. Gonzaga finishes 31 and 1. Baylor 28 and 2. Unbelievable, guys. Unbelievable. Just looking at as you see me looking down. Sorry, sorry to do that to you. <laughs> Didn't mean to look down for so much because I'm checking out the box score. I took some notes and stuff like that. Unbelievable, guys. You know, at the half. And you know, Gonzaga cut it 47 37 at the half, right? They trimmed the, the deficit. 10 and the average fans sitting there thinking yeah Gonzaga's still in it and they technically still were they were still in it at the half they were and then when Suggs hit that N1 right kind of got all fired up under the basket and stuff I don't blame them for doing that they were looking to get some momentum there was still plenty of time left in the second half he uh believe he missed that free throw is you know not a big deal they're they're, they're still right in the game Suggs was trying to give his team some uh, some momentum. 
So guys, it's been fun, I must admit, talking about college basketball. Uh, the first time, this is the first time I've done a few videos on college basketball. I've gotten some great comments from some of you out there. Some of you really, uh, definitely big college basketball fans. I'm going to really have to consider doing this again next year. The only difference is because this year I waited till March Madness till the tournament started to do some videos on college basketball. So I'm considering uh, getting some videos going for the regular season and stuff like that. To because uh, I had a lot of fun doing this, so a couple of them were were a lot of fun. To, all of them were a lot of fun to do, and it's uh, fun to follow. So the Indiana Hoosiers guys, Indiana Hoosiers, still the last team to go undefeated win the tournament in 1976. Coach Bob Knight, that streak goes on. It will now be 46 years as they start. Uh, next season. I think it's getting more difficult to do that, to go undefeated with social media and all that stuff, guys. It's harder, it's more more difficult to do, you know? Uh, in my humble opinion, it is. Alright, guys, so for now, this is Dennis Sullivan saying, I will see you, yes, you very soon. Uh, definitely, definitely, uh, Consider subscribing because I got a lot of basketball still. At the, if you're an NBA fan, definitely hit that notification bell. We'll have some. I'll have some more videos for you. Plenty of basketball left, just not college basketball, as the season has officially come to to a close. As has this video, and I will see you soon. Bye for now.